Hey guys, so last time we covered the Hero Brian Sad Face Buzz Bar, and um, now we are going to cover a new thing. So let me just quickly get rid of this Boss Bar set Hero. Br actually, really, just Boss Bar remove Hero Brian. <laughs> oh boy! All right, so we removed it. It's gone. Now we are on to this new thing, which I will show you what it does. So here we have a villager. Here we have a sheep. We are going to click this button and flip this switch. And when I look at the sheep, target health shows up as a bar. And when I punch it, the health goes down. Just like that. If I do it to this guy, his health goes down a different amount. If I look at him, it's still what it was before. How do I do it? Magic. It's wizardry. It's, it's, it's magic, Harry. No, I'm just kidding. It's called commands. Anyways, so this only takes four commands. The sad part is this thing only works for single player. It does not work in multiplayer very well at all because of what I explained in the previous video if you want to see it. But boss bars are kind of like scoreboards and a scoreboard for you is also a scoreboard for someone else. Um, so a boss bar for you is also a boss bar for someone else. So if I look at it and it tells me the target health, it's going to look at some and someone else looks at something else, there's going to be a problem there. So anyways, let's go on with this because this could be cool for an adventure map, right? Anyways, target health. Also, don't question, I can't edit what the name says up here. I mean, you kind of can, but that involves a lot of grinding commands and not anything that's, you know, elegant like this. Anyway, so in the previous video, we talked about setting boss bar values to be a variable number using scoreboards. So depending on what the result from the scoreboard is, we get a variable for the value. Same idea, except we're not using scoreboards, we're using the result of data. And I'll go over it kind of slowly again for you. So we're going to go over it a little by little because it takes longer to explain commands, but there's less commands, so it's not that big a deal. Anyways, so the first command is storing the result of getting data of the closest mob you are looking at. So basically, I'm looking at a mob, and it is going to store, uh, store its score onto value. Um, based on the data it is. So first, let's get to that mob. Let's find that mob. So it's executing at as the player. So running the command as the player, at the player. So we're just, you know, we're, we're starting right where I'm standing, facing the direction I'm facing. Next, we are going to position two in the direction I'm facing. So we are going to extend where the command is running from two into where I'm looking. So if I'm looking this way, it is going to go one, two. Two blocks this way is right here. So the command's going to be run wherever I'm looking at to that way. So it's going to be run right here because I'm looking this way. If I'm looking this way, it's going to be run right around where the fence is at. Next, now we are going to look for the actual mob. Now you can adjust this number to be bigger or smaller, and you can adjust some of the other numbers so that you can more accurately pick the mob you're looking at. Of course, I haven't really been in 1.13 for more than like two hours, three hours, so I haven't thought of a specific way to just grab the mob you're looking at, but if you have that too, you could just throw this in there, that in there instead. Anyways, so now we're picking a new mob, a new entity to run the command that we want to run, and that entity is not going to be a player, it's not going to be an item, and it's only going to be one entity, and it's going to be the closest entity, and it's going to be within a radius of one, at most one. So we are looking this way. If we're looking this way, the command is going to be run at that fence and it's going to look around in a circle of one, which if you if you watch my target limiter, there's already a problem with that because a circle of one is off centered due to the position of that point. But we're not going to talk about that. Anyway, so we're going to look in there. We're going to go in a radius of one. We're going to go in a circle radius of one in a sphere, actually. And if there's something in that sphere that is not a player, not an item, it's going to it's gonna play a command as him or her, I guess. And it's also going to play the command at them, but it's not really important to play the command at them. It's just like, whatever. You just add that in because, I mean, it helps things. Anyways, so next, after we have found the entity that we want to play the command at, we're going to play the actual, we're going to go to the actual beef of this, the actual important part. The first, the first huge portion of that execute was just to grab the entity the player is looking at and play a command at that entity. Next, we are going to store a result 
onto the boss bar called health bar. And we are going to store the value of this command that gets run. This command is called data. So whatever this data get entity at as health returns, whatever it returns is going to be put on as the value of the health bar. Let's see what this does. So we're going to do this. And notice how when I do this, it says health 20F. So data is the new way to do um, slash entity data in the previous 1.12. It's going to look at MBT data of whatever you're talking about. So data get is going to grab data and return the whatever that data is as a number, as a true false, as a string, whatever. And if we pick entity, it's going to do it for entities. If we pick block, it'll do it for blocks. Let's do add S for this one. If I just leave it blank like that, it'll give me everything, all my MBT data, which is quite a bit of MBT data because uh, this is all my the things I can craft. But if we're, we want to be specific, we can call out that MBT data like, hey, what's up? So if we do inventory, we're calling out the inventory. We're saying, let's look at just the inventory. So now it's just showing, notice how it shows the slots and what items are in the slots, which was right here, inventory colon, and then the rest of it is what we found right here. So this one, we're looking for health, which is going to be the current health that that entity has. And us, it's 20. The sheep is like six right now or something like that. So the value is going to be stored in the health bar. Actually, it's probably less than six. I mean, I punched him hard anyway. So that is going to be stored as the health bar's value. So this is a representation of his MBT data of health. Next, we do the exact same command, but instead of checking for his health, we're checking for his max health, which is right here. So if we pick inventory, it'll show all the inventory. But if we add these brackets to be zero, it's looking at an array. If you don't know what an array is, just know that the zero means it's picking the first item, the first thing in this list of, uh, in the list of things here. So for us, it'll return the spawn egg, basically, because that's the first thing. Um, and then if we want to go even deeper into that, that, that thing that we selected of the spawn egg and we want to see what item it is, we can add the ID. And that will tell us it's a spawn egg because you went from you're looking at you're, you're grabbing the inventory you're looking at the first thing in the inventory and then you're looking at the id of the first thing so with the sheep we're going into his attributes which is like you know not generic dot knockback generic dot health all that good stuff generic dot max health we're looking at his attributes and we're picking the zeroth item in the list and we are looking at the base value. The zeroth item in the attributes list is your max health. The oneth is going to be something else. I mean, we can see what that is. Let's see. So zero returns max health. One returns knockback resistance. Two returns movement speed. Three, blah, blah, blah. You can figure it out yourself. So we are picking the max health. And then we are grabbing the number at the base. And as you can see in the outputs, base says 20D. So the result, 20D. But for the sheep, it's going to be a different number. So that number gets put as the max number in the health bar. So his health, the health bar, the length of the health bar or the max value is his max health. And the health he's currently at is the value. Pretty simple once you explain it, but getting the commands to get there can be a little weird and complicated, right? So next are the last two, which are just getting rid of the the bar making the bar hidden and visible depending if you see anything um this again it, this one is trying to grab that entity like trying to say oh you're looking at something that's not a player or an item so but instead of actually looking at it we're just saying unless we're just saying if you're not looking at something unless if you're not looking at something that's not a player or not an item in a radius of one, then it's going to make the visibility false. So it disappears the hotbar. But if, if you are looking at something that's not an item or a player, then it's setting it to true so you can see the health bar. And that's it. Four commands. Two of them are pretty much the same, and the other two are pretty much opposites of each other's. So not too complicated. Simple once you get down to it but the execute has a lot of stuff coming before it that makes it kind of look crazy. Um, hopefully you guys could understand it. I mean, 
I feel like I'm talking nonsense, uh, but maybe it's making sense to you. Uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one where we will have actually quick reminder. In the next one, we are going to go the next part of this thing that I'm that I'm, that I'm doing with Entity Health. I mean, there's one last thing I made so far. Um, but that one goes over a multiplayer friendly version that works pretty well in multiplayer. I tested it. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.